Hello awesome person, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, that's awesome, then just welcome to my channel. My name is Joy, I do unboxings, makeup try-ons, and I throw in all kinds of things to keep you on your toes. And today, I want to do a get ready with me. I really enjoyed the last one, so I figured let's do it again. So I'm not going to name everything in this video, I may... I don't know, but for the most part, all the products that I use today, I'm just going to link in the description box down below. So if you're interested, if you can't see or I don't show you or whatever, you'll at least know what I'm using. I just figured that, honestly, I'm sitting here, I'm drinking my coffee out of my new cup that Heather Starcher got for me. I absolutely love it. <laughs> Yesterday, I got out into the sun a little bit, and my mother had bought me a whole bunch of planting, like, I don't know what they're called, they're like hanging baskets, and they were empty, and, um, I had to fill them and put seeds in them and hang them up, so I went ahead and did that, I started a video on it. I don't know if I'm going to vlog it or if I'll just put it up as like, you know, just seeing my plants or whatever it is you guys call it. I think I need to get a new fan too. This one keeps breaking. I guess that's what you get for buying it at the dollar store. I enjoy my fans though. They help me with my skincare so much. But my skin is changing again. I do not know if it's menopause that I'm going through because I'm only 41 going on 42, but I had a hysterectomy back in 2012 and I had a partial hysterectomy. So they left in an ovary so I didn't have to um, oh, take hormone pills. And so um, anyways, about 2018 or so, I was told I was in the first stages of menopause and it could last for like 15 years before it goes into the second stages. And I have no idea what the stages are. I've never looked into it. I'm just like, oh, great. And um, so anyways, like in the beginning, I just had some hot flashes here and there, you know, whatever. But now I think I'm full blown into it. I'm having hot flashes. I have night sweats. Like every day I wake up and I am soaked from sweating all night long. My skin keeps changing. And I do believe now I'm dry. <laughs> like I went from oily to combination to freaking dry. And it's so annoying because I'm just going to use my same skincare at the moment. I don't want to open up anymore. I do have some items for dry skin, but... I've been collecting those for like my mom and daughter and every once in a while maybe for giveaway. But this whole, uh, it is so annoying. That's all I have to say. My skin changing. I hope that it will figure it out. Make up its mind because I, uh, I'm tired of trying to figure out what my skin is. I just know that my skin don't, it's not as oily as it was and I feel like it's getting, um, like flaky I guess like some parts like up here and I haven't I was just out in the sun yesterday and I wore my sun hat so if I get sun it's gonna come like you know like through here and down and like this part up is gonna always be safe for the most part but like I'm like um flaky almost like getting dry skin and I'm like what the hell I've never had that happen before so um my, I say my dermatologist, but it's really my son's dermatologist. Um, he has, I'm probably going to say it wrong, but it's like vertilago. It's the same thing that Michael Jackson had that turned him white. My son has a white patch in his hair right here, and it's coming down into his forehead and stuff. But anyways, so I ask that doctor when I take him all kinds of questions, and he's really super nice, and he answers them for me. So um, one of the things he told me to do is to take like a blotting cloth or a piece of toilet paper or something to wash your face and after you wash your face um don't put nothing on it and go two three hours with nothing on it and see what happens and he said like when you put it 
when you put the cloth or whatever, you know, it's got to be like toilet paper, paper towel, blotting cloth, but something that it can soak it up and you can see. Um, when you put it on, if it's damp, then those are your oily spots. Well, when I first did that, like, I could put it all over my whole entire face, and my whole entire face would be oily. And then it went from that to just, you know, the T-zone or whatever. And then I just did this the other day, not oily at all. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't know what to do for dry skin. <laughs> I'm like... I guess gonna have to ask my mom. No, I'm just kidding. I'll just you know have to research it a little bit more. But because I don't like to waste products, I'm still using everything that I was using for my um, oily skin. So I don't know how that's gonna make my skin turn out. Actually, I don't know if I'm making it worse or I drop things all the time. Um, or making it better. I really don't know, honestly, to tell you the truth. I need to figure out a palette I want to use. Oh, I'll be all right back. So I've straight up like messed my brows up besides burning them. I won't leave them alone. I keep trying to shape them. <laughs> I think I'm just making it worse. Just making them worse. But I'm taking my exercises more seriously. We went to the YMCA yesterday and I'm going to, oh shit, did you see what I just did? I just accidentally went into the wrong color. <laughs> oh well. Um, but anyhow, we went to the YMCA and I went to the gym. My husband and the boys swam. I. I don't really like to swim. I, I used to when I was younger, but now that I'm older, I really don't care. If I do swim, I like to swim outside. Um, I'm allergic to bleach and most chlorines. They do have some that are hyperallergenic, but, you know, most of the time people working have no clue what is being used, so I don't like to take the chance, and, um... Plus, it's inside, and I hate inside pools. I hate inside swimming. I just, like, I don't know. I don't know how anybody, you walk in, and all you smell is, like, chlorine, and it's hot and muggy, and I don't know. I don't like that. But, so why we were there, because, you know, for a family to go in, it's um, where I live. I don't, I don't know if it's all that way in every YMCA, but it's $25. And so, it's $25 for a day visit, and uh, with COVID... You have to, as of right now anyways, I don't know how long that's going to last, but um, you do have to call and like schedule ahead of time and make an, you know, an appointment because they can only have so many people in the pool at once or so many people in the gym. So we went at 7 o'clock at night and stayed till like 8.30 and it was fun. It was actually really fun. I did like three different machines. Um, no, I'm lying. I did two. I was... No, I did three. I did this one where you, like, where it sways you back and forth, and then I did one where you sit down and you, like, um, like you're pedaling a bike, and then I did the walk thing, but I'm gonna tell y'all what, I'm just, I, so, I tell everybody it's just because I'm lazy, but in all reality, it's because it hurts to walk, like, so my tailbone, or, so my spine goes inside my tailbone like this. And, like, all my doctors know it, and eventually I'm probably going to have to have surgery. And so certain things hurt me really, really bad. And walking is one of them, unfortunately. And so I got on the um, the walking machine, and uh, my husband, because he went swimming, but then after he went swimming, he came in, and he was talking to me until I finished up. Because I told him I'd work out until they got done, you know, swimming. So, anyhow... He came in and told me that they were done, and I'm like, well, let me finish this up. And then he decided to jump on the walking thing, and I'm like, well, I want to do that really quick. And he's like, well, get on. So I got on next to him, and um, uh, he was doing like, um, I think it was like four miles an hour, and he was like walking normal. But he has he's like six foot three and a half, and he has really long legs, and he walks really, really fast. And so he's like, here, let's start you off at 2.5. I couldn't keep up with 2.5. 2.5 was like a steady jog for me. <laughs> and it's because it hurt. And I, I, mean, I don't run, like, because that hurts. And so I didn't stay on that, but for maybe, like, maybe two minutes. And I was like, nope, I am definitely, definitely not doing this for 
maybe never I don't know um so like I'm not supposed to go to chiropractors because of how my back is and um but I, they don't give me nothing for it because I refuse to take certain medicines and the stuff that they can give me uh, like the cortisone shots I can't take those anymore you can only take those for so long so I just try to not do things that cause me a lot of pain and that's that's one of the reasons why I'm like really really lazy but I've noticed that doing certain workouts I can do certain workouts I can't do so I'm hoping that maybe it'll help it may not help though I went to physical therapy for six months and that didn't help. That just made it worse. But I'm not doing, I won't do stuff that hurts as I'm working out because I don't see the point in hurting yourself. I'd rather be 500 pounds and happy than trying to, because I'm not even trying to lose weight because, you know, I feel like I need to lose weight. Like, I don't think that I look that bad. I'm a little plumpy or a little fluffy, but I'm. I'm really not, you know, that big of a girl. Some people may think so, but I'm perfectly happy with my size. But I just want to get healthier. And so I'm hoping that by working out a little bit, it's going to help me quit smoking. It's going to help me, um, you know, make my life a little a little easier, a little healthier, changing my eating habits up. I mean, you can't do it overnight, and if you try to, you're just going to screw yourself in the end, so don't. But my eating habits, I'm eating more fresh fruits and salads, which really sucks because that crap's expensive, just, you know, if, if you're not much of a salad and fruit. Like, if you get it in cans, it's not that expensive, but if you buy it fresh, it's ridiculously expensive. That's why I'm trying so hard for my garden this year to do so good. But I haven't even, I mean, I have my um, vegetables planted, like they're starting. I can't put them in the ground until like the first or second week of June because I live in northern Michigan. So we do things a little different up here. But um, I, uh, um, I don't want to fail. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't want to fail on uh, no. Um, my garden this year, so I want it to be super good so that way I can have my mom help me learn how to can, and then she does all that stuff. She would have been really good. I wanted nothing to do with it when I was younger, and so now that I'm older and I want something to do with it, she said she'd help me out, um, so I'll do that, and then that way we can have good vegetables all year long. Like I cannot be affording the prices for it all the time. And when it goes out of season, it goes up. So I got to do what I got to do to live a little bit of a healthier lifestyle. I do really like these get ready videos with me. I can just chit chat about stupid stuff. And I don't talk about this much. I mean, people in my life know about it, but you don't. So, I mean, you might. I might have talked to you about it. But I had a um, mental breakdown in 2019. No, 2020. And found out that I have borderline personality disorder. So... I am now medicated, which is probably the best thing that has ever happened to me. They finally, I feel like they finally have me diagnosed the right way and they have me um, put on the right medicine. Took a couple of tries because I'm super picky about my medicine that I take. So there's certain ones I just refuse to take and then they have to figure something else out for me or I guess I don't take it. Um, but and that's because I used to be a pill head. And I don't want any pills that are going to give me a high-like feeling when I take them. So um, I do know there's some medicines that are even for like your mental health that you can take them and they'll make you have that high-like feeling and I don't want it. 
And the only reason why I know that is because I used to take them when I wasn't supposed to take them. Because that's what drug addicts do. Because um, I used to be one. Not anymore. I've been clean. I've been a recovering alcoholic for 18 years. And I've been... Let me think about this. I've been a recovering drug addict since I was 28. So... 41. That's 13 years. That's awesome. I didn't even realize that. So I smoke marijuana, but where I live, it is recreational. And before it became recreational, I did have a medical marijuana card. Um, I do that for pain management. My doctors were done giving me medicine for my back, my legs, and my hips. Uh, they uh, straight up told me to get a medical marijuana card because they were there wasn't anything else. I was already at like a pain management, pain control facility. And they said there was nothing else they could do to help. And that was about the only thing they could suggest. So that's what I did. And it doesn't take my pain completely away, but it does make it to where I can sleep better at night and during the day to where I can, um, function better. But all of the other drugs that I did, which was mainly pills, but I did dabble with cocaine, crack, and meth a little bit here and there when I was in my 20s, but uh, um, I'm 13 years clean from that, and I used to be an alcoholic too, but anyways, so back to my mental health. So my mental health, um, we found out that after having my um, mental breakdown, and I started going to counseling like every week and um, they, after like a month, they realized what was wrong with me and they started um, medicating me. And in my past, I had been diagnosed with, um, what is it called, bipolar disorder and I knew I did not have bipolar disorder. I knew that they were wrong. Um, I know people that have bipolar disorder, and, uh, yeah, that wasn't me. The medicines that they gave me, I went through, like, four years, and at first I was like, okay, maybe, maybe, but then, you know, when you take every medicine that they give you, and it makes you worse than what you already are, you, that, you... Yeah, you're not what they diagnose. So, um, I went, I was going to therapy or counseling or whatever, um, and they were like confused because my medicine wasn't working and blah, blah, blah. And I was just having more issues and I was having more problems. I was fighting with everybody in my life and you know, so finally one day I just said, to hell with it, fuck you, I'm not doing any more of this medicine, I don't think that it works, and I don't have time for this, I'll just deal with it. Well, you can deal with it until you have a mental breakdown. And then, once you have a mental breakdown, you're gonna fix it or end up on the third floor permanently, so, um, I mean, cause you get the cops called on you and everything when you have a mental breakdown cause you freak everybody out around you. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on with you. Like, so, um, and if you're in public, like I was, I was at my dentist's office. So when you're in public and you have a, um, mental breakdown, <laughs> yeah, it don't help any better that you're in public. So it makes it even worse. But anyhow, uh, so yeah, I, um, finally figured out, I guess what I'm trying to say is I was going to counseling everything was going good. I went, I was down to like once every three months, just going in and talking to my counselor and COVID hit and I know I was down once every month going to see my counselor and then COVID hit. And then it was like once every three months because I didn't want to do, um, I didn't want to do, uh, zoom meetings, I guess is what they're called where you talk to each other, like over, you know, like your, I guess you'd be on your phone, probably have to download app, but you know, kind of like Facebook, you know, where you FaceTime, I didn't want to do that. Um, so because I didn't want to do that, um, they, uh, told me that, you know, I would only be able to go like once every three months and I thought I was fine with that, but I did that twice and then she quit. My counselor quit her job. So I don't know 
now, like, I'm not sure. I don't want to find another counselor. I am really hard to deal with, and I need a strong-willed counselor, and I don't come across them very often. And, um, I don't know. I don't think I'll ever find anybody. So, my first favorite counselor that I liked was Kurt, and I went through probably... Shaky, shaky, shaky. Um, no, I, I do that all the time though. I'm so fucking funny. But anyways, um, I probably went through three counselors before I found him and I stayed with him for a couple of years and then, um, he transferred to another area and then, uh, I went years, years. I didn't find another counselor. I probably seen 50 of them and, uh, I just didn't like any of them. So then because of that, I was like, to hell with it. I'm not going to, um, like, you know, have a counselor. Fuck it. I guess I don't need it. Until I had my mental breakdown. And then my doctor is super awesome. Like, she knows I'm a cunt. And, uh, that I mean, that I yell. Because you guys don't know this part about me. Like, when I get, when I get, um, real bad anxiety or whatever, I, I yell, like, I don't know how to, like, um, communicate the right way when I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to tell you something, like, I don't, um, I don't know how to do it without, like, if you don't understand what I'm saying, then it pisses me off, and then I start to yell, and, um, so she knew that I had issues before I had my mental breakdown, um, she had tried talking to me about it, and I was, like, dead set about not, um, getting help with anybody, and I was like, all oh, you guys are quacks, you know, all the, all you, all these counselors are quacks, like, nobody cares about their jobs anymore, and, um, so, like, I'm like, no, I don't want to do it, and then I decided... I don't know, it was about six months before I had my mental breakdown that I wanted to see a counselor and every place that I called, um, they asked me questions and I've never had this happen before, but, the fucking, but they'd ask me these questions and then afterwards I'd be like, oh, well, you're not critical. We're only taking critical patients. And I'm like, well, I guess that's good to know that I'm not critical. Um, so like I did try to get a counselor, but I couldn't find one, but I didn't ask my doctor. I didn't say, Hey, you know, is there anybody that you can recommend for me to do? I didn't do that. But anyway, so when I had my mental breakdown and the cops showed up, I had two choices. I had to agree to, um, right then and there, because where my dentist office is in the same building, there's like a bunch of other doctors and it just so happens that my family physician is in there also. So, um, they were like, you need to either, uh, make an appointment right now so that way we know that you're going and you know follow through with that appointment um and we're going to double check and make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing blah 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 and they said that if not they were going to arrest me and take me to the third floor of the hospital and who wants to do that so my option was yeah not a problem i will make that um appointment. So I did. And I went the very next morning at eight in the morning and, um, well, long story short, I didn't get arrested because I followed through with what I was supposed to do. And I started seeing my counselor and within a couple of weeks, they had me on one medicine and I went through a couple, like I said, before, um, they found one and I can't remember the name that I'm on. Um, but it's a time released medicine and I take it, I'm supposed to take it in the morning because you're supposed to eat on it, but I don't eat in the morning. Like I usually don't eat until like 10, 30, 11. If I do eat in the morning, it's like a 10, 30 or 11. And, um, so normally it's like one, two, three in the afternoon before I have something to eat. And then I eat really late dinners. So I normally just go ahead and take it at like my, I take my pill between like 1130 and 12 every night. I'm really bad at taking it at the same time every day. Um, I would try to set an alarm, but if I'm in the middle of doing something and an alarm goes off, 
I will shut that alarm off and I'll be like, I'll get to it in a minute. And then I never get to it. So like, I don't know. I'm just really bad with pills. And I really think it's because I used to be a pill head and I just don't like to take them that I subconsciously think I'm going to become a pill head again. And I went, no, it was hard. It's hard doing something that you like. Um, I wouldn't say, I mean, they say I was a drug addict. I don't know. I wouldn't say I was an addict. It wasn't, it wasn't that hard to quit for me. When I decided to quit, it was really actually pretty simple, but I do remember um, what I felt like. I do remember how much I liked the sensation. I do remember the joy that I thought I was getting off of it, and that sometimes is what you miss. So maybe that's where the addict part comes in. I don't know. My biggest problem is drinking, though, but I guess that's another story. So I think that's what my problem is. I think my problem is that... Um, uh, I don't want to, but I think my problem is, let me see, actually, I actually need to find lipstick real quick. I'm going to tell you about this last product that I'm going to use really quick before we wrap this up. I know I just like totally quit talking in mid sentence, um, but I got sent this Ger Giorgio Armani lipstick from Influencer. Uh, I was super excited because I never hardly, unless it's going to my spam, but when I check my spam, I don't find it or see it. This is what it looks like. This is going to be my second time wearing it. Looks like that. Um, it's. I wish they would give me a different color. Now I do remember. Now I do wish they would give me a different color because this is like pretty much the same color as my lips with just a little bit of um, maybe a little bit of a shine to it. And um, I remember it was like a month and a half ago when they asked me about this. I never get confirmations. If I do, it's usually, you know, the day that it gets delivered or the day after it gets delivered, it'll be like, you're in. And I'm like, I already got the damn thing. But, um, anywho, so I just wanted to show you that. And I believe when I looked it up, it was $190 for fat lipstick. Cause it is a full size, but they have like smaller sizes of it where it's cheaper. But I could tell you, there's no way that I'd pay $190 for this lipstick, even if I was a Kardashian, because it's not that good. Like, it doesn't dry down, and, um, uh, what is it called? I fucking hate this. Uh, like, when you take drinks, you know, it leaves a little thing behind, and, you know, it's just, you can smear it off or whatever, but... I won't be brushing my hair today because I washed it last night when I was at the Y. I took a shower after, um, see all my gray hairs? I'm loving it. Um, that looks like dandruff. I don't know, everything else is changing on me. I guess I can get dandruff too, but, um, so yeah, I washed it last night when I was working out because I sweat so bad and my hair was just like, so I never brush my hair the day after I wash it. I just leave it the way it is and then the next day. So anyhow, but let me finish up what I was saying. I think the reason I have a hard time taking pills is because I was a pill head. And I think, you know, hmm, if I wasn't a pill head that I could probably take my pills like I was supposed to. But I think subconsciously I'm afraid that if I take it every day like I'm supposed to, that I'm going to get back into the scheme of being a drug addict that pops pills again. So... That's why I don't, but I do take my medicine between 1130 and 12 every night. Sometimes it may be a little bit past 12. I know my doctor said that if I took my medicine spot on every day, it would work a hundred times better, but I do feel like the medicine that they have me on has made my life a hundred times better. Now, if I forget to take a medicine, like when we went down state to visit my daughter, I forgot to take my medicine because I leave it on my bedtime stand. So that way when I'm going to bed, if I did not take my medicine, I'm going to see it where it's at. It's like right here. And then I have to turn my switch off for my light. So I'm going to see it. And then I could be like, oh, I didn't take it. Um, so I like just totally forgot to pack it because it was like a last minute thing. And the only problem I have with it is if you go one day without taking that medicine, holy crap, it takes three days to get back on track. 
because you're going to go the day without your medicine and it's going to break you down. You become, well, at least for me, I become emotional. I become bitchy. I become irritable. I can't stand myself. I can't stand anybody around me. I'm yelling at everybody like, like way bad. So I just try not to talk to people. I try to stay away from everybody if that happens. And then I take my medicine, you know, the next night and it takes like two days for it to kick in to make me start feeling better. So I go through like a three day process where I'm a complete twat. And so, um, I try not to, oh, it's already getting hot in here, but I try not to, um, I try not to forget my medicine, I guess is what I'm saying, but it does happen sometimes. <sighs> it's a hot day, hot day. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. If you actually watched until the very ending, I appreciate you so much. Um, and I think that I'm going to kind of use these get ready videos to just, cause all I did was went and told my counselor what was going on in my life. And so I'm usually a closed book when it comes to being private, like my private life, I've always been a closed book, but everything else, I've always been an open book, if that makes sense. Um, and so my counselor was the person that I went and talked to about all of my issues. Now, I'm not going to go into like all of my issues, but like, um, I have, you know, I have other people that I can talk to about the bad things. Um, you know, like if I'm fighting with one of my children or, you know, my mom pisses me off or my daughter annoys me or, you know, whatever it could be. My husband could make me mad. You never know. Like I have people to talk to about that, but like, um, I just like get on here and like, you know, just talk about what's going on. And if you watch me, you watch me. If you don't, you don't. I completely understand. This is going to be my way of like venting because with COVID still going on, I, I'm not going to find a counselor. I'm not because like, it's just not going to happen. Like my counselor, um, was so cool. And from day one, she was so cool. And I miss Aaron so much, but I can't tell your last name. I don't want anybody to hunt her down. But, um, but anyhow, like I miss her so much and I just, I know me, like I'm going to go into the next counselor and I'm going to be like, mm. I'm going to compare that person to Aaron because that's what I did for so long with, um, Kurt, like for years until I just decided to quit. Like I compared all my counselors to him that I, my new ones, none of them, none of them like held up. So I didn't like any of them. I'd see him once or twice and I'd be like, Nope, you're not for me. And I'm going to do the same thing because I liked her. So I figured hell with that. I'm just going to do this. And I just keep rambling and keep rambling. But anyways, so, um, I don't know. I don't know how often I'll put these videos up maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, maybe once a month. Like I have no idea, but alrighty, I do appreciate you for watching my video. Um, I do hope that you enjoyed this and, you know, found out a little bit more about me and, um, yeah, I guess that's it. I hope you have a wonderful day. Remain awesome and peace out. Awesome crew.